So uh, this is uh, our fifth example of geometric proofs uh, involving triangles. And on this one, uh, we're going to look at uh, some overlapping triangles and how we can do proofs involving CPCTC and overlapping triangles. So you're given that angle B is congruent to angle D, BC congruent to DC. So uh, just kind of to put that information in, that's what it looks like. And hopefully you're noticing very quickly that that gives you information about two triangles. It gives you information about this triangle and this triangle, the two little ones. And what we're trying to prove is actually things about the big triangles, ABE and um, a, or ABE and EDA. And so sometimes it's helpful to actually pull those out, look at it like this, ABE, and then over here we can look at um, DEA. And we want to prove these two triangles congruent. But at this point, all we have is one angle. So we're going to use the two little triangles to help us find out information about the two bigger triangles. And it's actually very easy to prove those two little triangles congruent. You just go ahead and claim your um, vertical angles, and you get um, BCA is congruent to angle DCE. And that's just because vertical angles are congruent. Um, and so you've got these congruent vertical angles now. So now you notice that for these two little triangles, by angle side angle, um, we have two congruent triangles. So our third step is just simply proving the two little triangles congruent. And that was a very natural thing to do, mainly because it was easy. And whenever you have something that is powerful, like proving two triangles congruent, that's easy, usually a good idea to go ahead and do it. So I want to use looking at these two little triangles and find out what information can I get about my big triangles. Well, you might notice that AB and DE are congruent in the big triangles, in the small triangles. And then they, we can show them congruent in the big triangles. So that's a good thing to do. So we can say AB is congruent to DE. And our reason for that, actually 3 was angle side angle. And then our reason for this is what we refer to as CPCTC, which is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So A, B, and D, E are corresponding. Um, you know, you can see it right here. A, B, and D, E, they're in the same place in our congruent statement. And so they are congruent. Now, we need something else. We either need uh, something like side B, E, and A, D, which they're not in the small triangle. Or maybe we need angle A and angle E. Well, those aren't in the small triangles. Um, and so we're having trouble come on, coming up with something else. But what we do know is we do know that this side is congruent to that side. And the reason that's beneficial is that makes ACE an isosceles triangle. So if we claim this, that AC is congruent to CE by CPCTC, I could have put those in the same step, step if I would have liked. That allows me to say that angle CAE is congruent to angle CEA. And the reason you can do that is because of um, the isosceles triangle. Um, depending how your teacher um, isosceles triangle, usually it's, they refer to it as theorem, but it might be definition depending on how your teacher defined isosceles triangles and then proved a theorem about them. Um, and now, the CAE and CEA are so nice because they're this angle and this angle. Those are CEA and CAE. And those are now congruent, so by angle, angle, side, we can prove what we were asked to prove, which is that these two bigger overlapping triangles, triangle ABE and EDA, are congruent, and that's by angle, angle, side. So that's a way to, to do this. There are some other ways you could have gotten there. For instance, you could have um, possibly shown that AD is congruent to BE uh, using segment addition because you got the, 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 the parts of it are congruent. But that would take quite a few steps to get to the answer to that. So that's why I did it the way that I did it.